So how about this? April 21st and the ground is white. <laughs> Actually, we were supposed to get this yesterday. Uh, we did kind of, but not to this degree. Morning guys and welcome back to Warner Farms. So, what's left? Uh, we need to get the 2020 monitor in there, so I need to get the 12 volt plug and uh, instead of just sitting in the tractor getting it set up, I can grab the uh, wall plug from up in the file cabinet where also the 2020 monitor is and sit in the shop here and get that set up. Really all I have to do is just make sure 2020 data is off of that and make sure 2021 is preloaded and ready to go um, and make sure all the fields look right, which in theory they should be because there's no changes from last year. Just update all the varieties in there, clear out stuff that doesn't need to be in there, add in new varieties, and that is good to go. So then that can be put in there. We're going to pull the planter out, basically get this turned around so it's backed in here because tomorrow they're talking anywhere between one to five inches of snow and it's not even going to get out of the 30s tomorrow so not going to be good fertilizer tender that is ready to go it's just a leak on the one sight gauge on the back tank uh silicone that and that is fixed um otherwise i got a couple of milwaukee packouts in there and the pump is all set up. It just needs to be flushed out from the premium green up that's in it right now from uh, top dressing rye. So I need to basically get a tote, uh, probably that infurrow tote on the far right over there once we pump that into this tank for our soybean infurrow because we got to pump water with that to get it up to three gallon to the acre. Back there, I got the corn infurrow mixed up with 1034-0 premium uh, infurrow and the balance for water to get that to three gallon to the acre. So I need to get that tote in there eventually, but not today because Wednesday we are getting thiosol for our two by two and we need to get in that tank our top dress mix for the rye for the second shot. Everything on the left there, that's all of our microfeed for this year in that tank so I can induct to that, so I can induct that into the 28 applicator. Possibly, that's if we still have the 28 applicator. That 28 applicator is kind of up in the air right now on what we're deciding to do with that. It's not that we don't want it, it's the fact that the sprayer uh, has now thrown a wrench into the equation on that, on whether or not we are going to even use a 28 applicator anymore. Some of you guys were interested in seeing how I was going to do the Milwaukee Packout layout. So we got rubbers in here, we got all sorts of adapters in here, two to three, three to two, zip ties, mainly for tools or anything else that we want to put in here. Right now, like I said, it's empty and cooler anything else that we plan on adding like i know there's some boron and stuff that we add uh to our ncga field uh two by two and a half extra storage outside of our stabilizer we'll just go in this spot so we're really getting this packed in here we're not going to be adding anything else to this this is essentially done um i think in the back i might work on doing some storage for some hoses because we do have a three inch hose extension back there and I know I want to kind of get like a hook mounted on the wall to kind of get that hung up on the wall. That way, if we decide to put two pallets of seed back there, uh, there's room uh, to put two pallets back there because otherwise there's really not a good place for that hose unless you just lay it on top of that back tank back over there, just draping it on top. Where do you think you're going? What are you doing, Axel? What are you doing? Oh, come here. Oh.
there, Bela. Get up there. Get up there. No, no. Get up there. There you go. take the 2020 monitor, go in the office, 
and uh, sit down and go through all the varieties, make sure everything is on here that we need. That's yeah, they got disconnects on them. Actually, this one was on. started. Barry's going to get the other one backed out and we are going to get old Big Blue out. I'm going to get that cleaned up today. Just a little bit of a difference. 1993 versus 2012. So that has a 12.7 in it, and the 2012s have 15 liters. Get this backed over where the blue semi was, and they're gonna work on getting that semi blown out with the big air compressor. would use my front windshield wiper but that needs to be replaced so that's on the list uh, okay that blinker is working that one I know last fall it quit but I've got new tiger light LED blinkers for those so that's gonna be good I'm gonna redo this monitor bracket here and you guys will see later today what I end up putting there and yeah cab just needs to be detailed a little bit and this thing is good to go for point 21. Here we got the semi blowed out with the air compressor and uh, he's taking it on over right now over to the farm and we're going to put that in the shop also with the 8530 and he's going to work on getting that detailed and cleaned out and uh, we've got a neighbor that's interested in it um, so potentially we might have this thing sold. That's why I haven't done any postings on it uh, just because uh, basically we're pretty sure uh, we've got it sold. So uh, if this falls through and he decides that he's not interested in it, I will have some posts out eventually. But uh, as of right now, by the time this video rolls out, I have no clue uh, where we're going to stand because it'll probably be around the 1st of May when this video rolls out. Oh, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful day. Snow and rain. Gotta love it. Now that took some skilled driving there to thread that needle. Well, I've been working on uh, getting planning, side dress, and spray sheets all put together and basically getting them ready to go in the binders. I've got a shipment from Sloan Express for the sprayer coming in and uh, also uh, MXT 400 Midland Radio. Uh, for the sprayer. I also got the 2020 monitor all done and basically made sure everything is ready to go on that. All varieties, all the fields look good. So this I'm going to go ahead and put in the 4650. All right. Should all, all I have to do is just 
mount this and plug it in and we are good to go. <laughs> there we go. For those curious, uh, Generation 1 uh, 2020 monitor, this is not a Gen 2, uh, 2630. Uh, reason why we've got a brown box in here is for the control box and the planner. Uh, this is not a new enough planner to run everything through the 2630. Now we could, and from my understanding, it costs 35 to 5 grand. $3,500 to $5,000 to, uh, there we go, run that through all everything through the 2630. That is why we still have this guy in here. Though that guy's been acting up the past couple of years, so hopefully it still is working fine. And hopefully this is all connected right, right there. Nothing's been changed, I don't believe, as far as I know. Wakey wakey 2020, come on. This is what I've been afraid of also. There we go. This plug on this 2020 monitor um, doesn't seem to work half. I mean, it works, but you just got to wiggle it a little bit. But once you get it in the right position back there. You can just click it on and off then. All right, let's just make sure everything looks good here. Wow, 100% singulation and I'm not even moving. That is fabulous. <laughs> so I don't know if I mentioned it before or not about the Xiway LFR trial that we're doing this year. Uh, that is 40 acres worth of Xiway LFR uh, fungicide, inferro fungicide. Uh, LFR means uh, liquid fertilizer ready, and this is an FMC product. And uh, this is supposed to be a systemic fungicide application. So basically we apply this in furrow through our in furrow system. So through the Keatons, not through the two by two by two, through the in furrow. And it's a systemic fungicide, meaning the plant takes it up through, through the roots. And basically it acts as a season long fungicide uh, protector of gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight. Really, those are the two big ones in our area. Tar spot's gonna be up in the air. I'm not sure how it's gonna do on tar spot, but we shall see. Um, but I guess this is supposed to be just as good as a fungicide application done at uh, VT to R3, uh, which is what we've typically been doing th by, by the plane. So this will be really interesting, whether or not uh, how that compares to a fungicide application done by the plane and also uh, how this does against tar spot because that's what I'm really interested in is how this does against tar spot. Tiger light package and then our nozzles and caps came in uh, from Dalt Meyer yesterday for the new sprayer. So I'm gonna put the new LED light replacements for those on from Tiger lights and see how they look. So I did get the uh, marker lights changed. They're converted over to LED. Uh, what I ended up doing, they are plug and play but that would require tearing that whole arm assembly apart. And I just found that it would be a lot quicker if I just spliced the wire onto the light bulb plug that was already there for the old light. So that's what I did. Just spliced it on there and uh, put it all back together and uh, it looks really nice. One thing led to another and uh, I ended up getting a pressure washer in here and uh, getting this all pressure washed and cleaned up. And then I decided to go ahead and hand wash it while I was in here. So how about this? April 21st and the ground is white. <laughs> Actually, we were supposed to get this yesterday. Uh, we did kinda, but not to this degree. And <laughs> yeah, snowing on April 21st. That's a little different.
done meeting with our Pioneer agronomist. We just had some questions on uh, some Pioneer software, and uh, we talked to him some more about our NCGA field, about variety selection down there. Uh, originally, I thought we were going to plant 1197, but now we had figured 1077, which personally, between the two, I would rather have 1197 down there, um, just because of... 1077 to me doesn't seem it has enough top end compared to 1197 so we swung this past him about you know maybe putting 1185 out there and he's like well why not consider this new 109 day which is 953 and also consider putting 1213 out there if you guys are going to be doing a lot of spoon feeding a boron that would help with uh kernel retention on on 1213 since 1213 if you don't stay on it enough with the water you will get a little bit of a nose back on it. And that's also in combination with boron or lack of boron. So we decided it's like, well, if we can get our hands on some 1213, that we'll do half that 40 acres down there with 1213, so 20 acres, and then 20 acres with 953. So anyways, uh, I did get this monitor bracket installed, the uh, Lancota Cubby system here. I can have this link down below in the uh, description. All of these monitor brackets in here are from Lancota. Uh, I do have this coming for the sprayer. I really like this. It moved the 2630 up a little bit. It did move this monitor bracket a little bit back and closer to the wind. I can't have this monitor for the drill position, the ComputeTrack 250 uh, positioned the way I had it. So I'm thinking I might either move it down here or I might see, since there is another hole drilled there, if I can move it over to that hole and kind of turn it. And leave it up there i don't know yet i'll i'll play around with this and get this figured out but uh for now this is pretty much done 100 percent done in here as far as monitor brackets go and everything really not sure what we're going to do this afternoon i'm gonna like i said just play around with some stuff here in the tractor and get some stuff finalized on this and maybe see if we can get the neighbor over to look at that semi and uh see if he's 100 percent interested in that still or if he's going to pass or what the plan is there that way because i do have two guys now a uh, guy a guy in missouri and a guy in uh vincennes i'm just going to start working down the list and barry uh while we were gone got the tractor wax he asked me if uh, he could do that and i said yeah knock yourself out and he did an awesome job looks awesome so i did get this monitor bracket situated and also got the computer track 250 situated as well that looks a lot better than how i had it i like where that's positioned versus up there it actually opens this all up a lot better so visibility is a heck of a lot better and this is all condensed in one area so instead of looking from here all the way over to there i can just I don't know. It just makes more sense for me to have them side by side to me than there. Clear down where that was and then clear up over here. But I don't know. I just think it looks a lot cleaner, nicer, uh, a lot more storage there. So that's going to be cool to have all of this. Keep the uh, planning plan and side dress plans there and any notepads or any notes or any papers I need, seed tags, whatever. There, there. And, oh. Pioneer 720, that is 22 rows around. I forgot I had that in there. Um, I don't know, I guess I can lay that there. I just got some manuals. This, in my opinion, has been the best uh, window cleaner for me. This, they actually got this in an aerosol can now, so I got a case of that, and I also got the stuff in the spray bottle, but this stuff is awesome. I absolutely love invisible glass. It's got a little bit of alcohol in it, and yeah, when it says streak-free, that is definitely streak free. That's what Barry used to clean all the windows on the tractor. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here and get my ear of corn out of here. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Uh, real quick, though, uh, we picked up, we, Dad and I stopped at Menards and picked up a can of Flex Seal. So I don't know if we're going to end up doing something similar to uh, what Larson's do up in Minnesota with their tanker set up because I was telling Dad about that and said, you know, what they've got is pretty awesome, so do we consider making something like that, or do we consider making a van trailer set up like what we had uh, thought about before and what we pretty much planned on doing? That's kind of up in the air. I really like what Larson's did, but I also like a van trailer idea. Um, I guess I need to go over there and take a look at the tanker and see 
uh, what potentially we could even do on that, on the outside of that, if we could end up making something similar to Larson's, or if we would just be better off to uh, build a van trailer, set up like what we used to have, so or what we still have right now, but sounding like we're just gonna end up bypassing that whole setup, so who knows, but uh, there, it's just a slight little leak in the back. So dad got the bright idea, and I said it before jokingly, that why don't we use Flex Seal? And Barry, I, and dad have been talking about this for a few days now about getting a can of Flex Seal and just going in the bottom of that thing to where the outlet is in the back and uh, Flex Sealing that all up on the inside and just seeing if it holds water. Because really, we're not gonna put fertilizer in that anymore. We would just end up using that for water. And if it leaks water still, so be it. You know, it's not really that critical. But if Flex Seal can seal it up, I don't know, they can seal a split boat. So, supposedly, so I guess we're gonna have a little experiment with Flex Seal and uh, put this stuff to the test and see how uh, good this stuff actually is. So, that'll be interesting. So anyways, you guys can look forward to that. Uh, with that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.